Hey Plannerholics! Welcome back to my channel and Happy New Year! I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season and is ready to pump the new year with energy but above all with lots of creativity. Today I am sharing my 2018 planner setup. Many of you have been requesting it on my Instagram and it's finally here! I'll be showing you how I'm using my new Jubun Techo planner and how I've organized everything in my traveler's notebook. We'll also be prepping a new month together in a sort of mini plan with me session. So let's get started! The traveler's notebook I'm using is from the Etsy shop Cadeneta Notebooks in this beautiful faux leather camel color. As you can see, I'm currently in a very Christmassy decoration. But before we change anything, let's talk about how it's organized. The first insert in my TN is my Jibun Techo planner. And my second insert is a monthly notebook I created to use as an editorial calendar. I then have my pocket sugarless notebook that I shared in my planning process video, which I will tag above. I've added a cute unicorn magnetic bookmark just to use as decoration and make it a little bit pretty. In the back pocket, I've stored some sticker boxes that I made exclusively for my planner. As for my writing utensils, I've included a regular Coletto pen that has four inks and a mechanical pencil. And then my favorite and go-to pen is my Stadler pigment liner in the 0.2 tip. The inside of the plastic cover has three pockets where I've stored some post-it notes in case I need to jot down quick notes or I need to add a temporary appointment in my calendar. So now that we've gone over the inventory, let's take a look at my planner and how I'm using the spreads inside. In the first page, I used some stickers to write my name and email address on top. In the yearly calendar, I will be keeping track of my vacation days as I did in my Hobonichi last year. Next, in the perpetual calendar, I've highlighted and written down all of the Spanish holidays and festivities for each month. But I still need to write out the US ones in a different color since I like to track those as well. I haven't filled out my dream chart, but I plan to write my new year resolutions or goals. Next up, we have my finance tracker. This is where I record all of my bills and keep track of my finances. I used some washi and mini icons to separate the different areas where my money goes. And I wrote out the sections below each one. For those pages that are important or I need to check often, I've created some top tabs to access them quicker. For this particular spread, I've used some animal page flags and these repositionable divider tags that I got in Staples. It was very easy to make them and all I did was glue the page flag onto the divider. I cut out the shape so it's not too flimsy and it won't fall off. The next page is an empty weekly spread example that I would like to eventually use as an ideal chore chart. After that, I have all of the collections from the planner which will be filled out as the year progresses. And then we move into the habit trackers. I've decided to use these graphs for my social media. I'm marking when I post on my blog, on my YouTube, when I send a newsletter, when I receive orders, and so forth. At the end of the month, I write my statistics and I review how much I've grown based on my posting habits. I've covered the past two months for privacy reasons, but here's what the habit chart looks like if you hadn't seen it. Now we turn the pages to the monthly spreads. Here is November, and basically all I do is keep a log of major to-dos on the sidebar, and I write out any events holidays, appointments, and birthdays that take place. I use the monthly spread for reference when planning my weeks, and so my decorating is very minimal as I like to keep it as functional as possible. 
Here's a quick look at December, and as you can see, I've created another top tab using the same repositionable dividers, covering up with washi and writing this month, so I can move it to the next spread when the month is over. Speaking of dividers, I made some monthly tabs and I printed them on sticker paper to access the monthly spreads on one side and the weeklies on another. Now let's take a look at my weekly spreads. I have another DIY top tab that says this week to mark the current week. But let's go over one that is filled out. Like in the monthly spread, I keep a weekly running to-do list. On the top, I sometimes track the weather and temperature. On the bottom section, I'll either write a highlight of my day or just a random note. And just below it, if I need to, I do my weekly meal plan. As for the rest of this space, I'll use it to write my daily to-dos and appointments using the hourly schedule. Each week is obviously different and I don't always record all the given sections. My style hasn't changed much from my Hobonichi days, but because I'm using my smaller size planner, I do try to keep it as functional and minimal as possible. At the back of the planner, I used an empty note page to do some pen testing. I mentioned in my review video that the pages are Tomoe River, so I kind of already knew what pens to use since it's the same paper as my Hobonichi. But nonetheless, the testing was made and as expected, the permanent markers are the only ones that bleed through. As for the rest, they show some shadowing, but that's about it. And after that, you have some monthly reflection pages, which I hope I can remember to fill out when each month is complete. Now we'll move on to the idea notebook. For those who haven't watched my review video, the planner I bought included this notebook and the life notebook. But I decided not to use the life notebook since I didn't find much use to the pages other than the perpetual calendar where I store everyone's birthdays. On the other hand, the idea notebook, since it's simply an empty grid notebook, I've decided to use it kind of like a bullet journal brain dump notebook. The first few pages, I have left a space to record all of my monthly spendings. If I go to the grocery store or buy someone a gift, I will record my spendings here and later add it all up to log it in my financial chart in the planner. There is a little box at the top to write the page number and that way I can create an index at the front. This notebook is going to be my substitute for my chicken scratch one right here. All my thoughts, notes, random to-dos, projects will be written in my idea notebook and I will replace this one here. In the card slots over in the back, I've included my old business card and the new one. Many of you might know that my brand went under a makeover a few months back and I'm super happy how it turned out. I would love it if you could check out my website if you haven't seen it yet. So that's it for my main planner. I don't use the back pocket other than to stick some pretty paper once in a while. Now let's check out my DIY insert. I created a cover for it by cutting a plastic sleeve and folding it in the inside. The actual insert is an undated monthly planner that I designed so I could use as an editorial calendar and plan out my content for my different social platforms and website. I used some calendar stickers to place the dates and some washi. I also made a top tab to mark the current month. And the idea with this insert is to schedule when I'll send a newsletter, when I'll post on my blog, or when I'll upload a new video on my channel. This is kind of a work in progress and I would really like to plan with one or two months in advance. So that's one of my main goals this year. So that is my planning system so far. Very simple and as you know, I'm always looking for the most functional way to lay out my tasks and keeping it creative so that I can stay motivated and check my planner regularly. I haven't bulked up the traveler's notebook too much since I do like taking the planner with me in my purse. Now keep on watching so we can prep my system for the new year and move out of the holiday theme I've got going here. First thing is first. I'm going to remove the planner and editorial calendar from the elastic bands so that we can update them better. 
I'm going to start with my Jibun Techo first. I previously picked out some pretty scrapbook paper from my collection and I cut it out to size. So I'm going to be using the pink love one for the planner and the horizontal stripes for the monthly insert. First, I remove the idea notebook and then I pull out the planner from the cover sleeve very carefully. As you can see, the notebook has a lay flat binding and it's very very simple. It came with two bookmarks, which I decided not to use, so I stuck them in the back cover with some washi tape and this way they won't get in the way or get dirty. So let's remove the Christmas scrapbook paper from the cover sleeve. This white 2018 cover is the original that came with a planner and I just like to keep it behind the pretty paper for no reason at all. The cover sleeve has a pocket in the front and I slipped a little cute polar bear die cut, which is actually a free printable that I offered in my VIP lounge. If you don't know what that is, it's an exclusive gallery of stationary printables which you can download for free. Only thing you have to do is become part of my Plannerholics newsletter gang. I would love it if you joined since I do share exclusive content directly to your inbox every single month. And you'll also have unlimited access to all of my free downloads. So go ahead and sign up after you watch this video. So for the new year, I picked out a few journaling cards that would look nice with the scrapbook paper. And now I'm just trying to see which one I like the best. I end up going for the polka dotted dark blue just because I like how it stands out. I'm also going to add a little detail on the pocket with this magnetic bookmark. Because I really like this weekly journaling card as well, I'm going to stick it in the inside cover so I can use it to write out a quick note or activity for the week. It also serves as a great dashboard element. Next, I'm going to grab this matching polka dot scrapbook piece and stick it in the back side pocket. Now I'm going to do the same with my calendar insert using the other scrapbook paper I had picked out. I'm going to add one last detail to my planner and it's this tassel charm that I got in a journaling kit with embellishments. And now, finally, we're going to prep my pages for the new year, starting with the monthly spread of January. First thing I do is use some washi to cover up the days that don't belong to the month. Then I check the holidays at the front of my planner and I write them down on top of the purple highlighter. After that, I'm going to take out my gift mini icons to jot down the birthdays of the month. I'm checking them in my life notebook to make sure I don't forget any. Next, I'm going to grab a motivating quote from my Mombi sticker book and place it on the top of my sidebar. I'm going to write down all of my major monthly to-dos just below it. To keep things cute but simple, I'm going to use this little set of bear stickers to brighten my spread and this little penguin that has a bow tie for New Year's Day. Using a different color highlighter, I'm going to write down the US holiday that is also taking place in January. And with that, my month is complete for now. As the days and events pass, I'll be adding them to the pages for sure. Now let's set up my social media habit tracker for January and February. For this, I just pull out all of my corresponding mini stickers and I write out the things I'm tracking. And last but not least, I'm going to move my monthly tab to January. And with that, my setup and monthly planning is complete. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this type of video and I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up as that helps me out a ton. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my planner updates. I hope you have a great start to the year and I look forward to talking with you in the comments below. Until next time, bye everybody!